In this chapter, we're going to look at something called blocks. Uh, what I have on the screen in front of me is three different types of blocks that we're going to look at. The first one is just a standard block. The second one is what's called a dynamic block. And the third one is a block that allows us to edit text. Um, we'll look at all those. Basically, a block is just a series of uh, objects such as lines and polylines and circles that we create to make a solid one continuous sort of object. So as you can see, I click on here and we have one grip that comes up. And if I grab that grip, it'll move the whole lot of the lines together. Now this is actually made up of lines and polylines. This is a window that we're looking at. So these jams, they're polylines. And then these lines here are just standard lines. and the great thing about using a block is that it allows us to reuse over and over again uh, the same sort of line work and it organizes it in such a way that it's all in the same continuous um, object. Because if I had these all separated as separate lines and polylines, I would have to select all those objects separately to select that. But with a block, you don't need to do that. Um, this is a pretty simple block. Uh, you might have something like a, a tree or a car, which has lots of lines and trying to select all those in one go would be uh, well time consuming and a bit messy so just keeping organized as a block is um, yeah, basically the best way to go with with something that you're going to reuse over and over again the next block we have is a block as well but as you can see when I select on it there's a little uh, arrow here uh, this is a dynamic block and what that means is it's like the window however with the standard block you can't actually just edit the uh, like as you see if I grab that grip it just moves around you can't actually stretch it or anything but with this one I can stretch it to suit what I'm doing uh, which can be very useful particularly in a building if you're using doors and windows where you want to stretch to suit the opening um, again it's basically set up exactly the same as a block there is a few little added steps that you do to make a dynamic block uh, but a very useful tool um, it's not available in all versions of AutoCAD. I, I can't recall off the top of my head exactly which version it came in with dynamic blocks. Perhaps 2007, maybe a little later, I can't recall. Um, so if you haven't got a really early version of um, AutoCAD, you're not going to be able to use this feature. Now, this block we have here, um, as you can see, it's all a bunch of text. Now, this is something we might have set up in our title block. We might have our date, revision, and drawing. And we can Generally, we could have these as separate text objects if we wanted to, or we could keep them organized in this type of block. If I double click this block, you can see that it brings up a window which refers to what we're looking at on the screen. So we have our drawing number, which we've got A1, and there's A1 in the value here. If I change it to SD2 and click apply, as you can see, it's updated it's right there. Um, same with the revision, we can change that to revision B, and it changes it. And again, with the date, we could change that to um, August. And you can see it updates it all automatically. So it's another type of block. Um, it gives you a bit more control about keeping text where you want it to be situated and positioned. Because sometimes um, when people are just doing their own thing with the standard text, it can actually get all over the place. So we won't worry about that one right now. We'll probably look at that a bit further down the track. And uh, what we'll look at now is more to do with blocks. So if you remember the command that we looked at in, a, in the previous chapter called explode, you can actually explode blocks. So if I type X and then select my object and press space or enter, you can see it now it's broken into its, auto, you know, its um, objects that it was made up with. So if you can look over here, if I select on that, it's a line. If I select on this and look at the properties, it's a polyline. Um, to create a, a block, what we use is the, the command um, block, or we can use B. But so we type B, and press a space or enter, and it'll bring up a window like this. So I'll go through this window. Now, the bigger point is where that little blue grip was before. And now, so we could pick that anywhere we want. We could pick it, pick it in the middle, on the side. I had it on the side, if you remember from. Uh, just before. Um, so that's probably the best place for the window. We'll just click on there. That's where we want the blue grip to be. 
Um, good idea to do that too, because as you can see that our X and Y coordinates aren't anywhere near zero. So if we just left that standard to be at zero, 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 which is what it is initially, uh, that grip's gonna be way down here somewhere, which is not ideal. Um, just ensure that you have the correct units that you're gonna be using. So we're using millimeters. Now it's gonna ask us to select the objects. So we'll click on this and we can just drag over that and press space or enter. And now we've selected our objects. Down here, it asks us what we wanna do with, with the objects. Now, we're gonna to wanna to convert all these objects to a block. The other two object, um, two options retain means that it'll keep it as the line work as it is but it'll create a file inside the drawing for the block if we want to um, import that later and delete means that it will just delete the, the text and create the block um, we'll just leave it as convert to block we just want to convert those lines straight to a block over here anno annotative is really to do with um, a, a, an option we haven't looked at yet uh, I wouldn't worry about that right now um, and just leave this one here, scale uni uniformly unticked. Uh, so it allows you to scale it, stretch it and that when you import it later if you wanted to. Um, I mean, you could tick that if you wanted to. It, uh, it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, this one here though, allow exploding. With this ticked, as you can see what I did before, when I exploded the lines, it allowed me to explode it. If I was to untick that and try and explode the object, it wouldn't allow me to explode it. So I think, Generally, it's good to leave allow exploding because sometimes you're going to want to explode a, a block to suit your uh, particular circumstance or when you're doing a drawing. Uh, there are certain blocks though that you certainly don't want exploded, um, such as the one we just looked at before with the, the text for the title block. Sometimes you don't want that to be exploded at all. You want that to stay out, um, so it's not able to be exploded, so you can keep the text all the way you want it to. In that case, you untick that block. Now it just asks us as well for a name for this block. So we'll just call it block standard. Okay, and then once we've done all that, we can click OK. And we select it. As you can see, we've got our block now. And there's our little blue grip where we clicked on the uh, insertion point. As I said, we could have picked that anywhere we wanted, but this is probably the best place for it. So that's the standard block. Now we can edit these blocks too if we wanted to add more things into it. The way we do that is that we select our block, right click and bring up our menu and then we can click on block editor. Now here's our block, we're inside a special editor now, we're not actually in our AutoCAD drawing as such. So I could, if I wanted to, add a few extra lines. So I'll just copy a line down here and another one here. And once I've done that, if you look up here to the right, there's Close Block Editor. If I left click on that, it's going to ask me if I want to save the block. And I do. I want to save what we've just done. And as you can see, it's edited it and added those lines in. And it's still all a part of the same block. Now, we'll have a quick look at dynamic blocks. What we, what we can do there is we've, we've got a st standard block. And we'll again, we'll right click on it. And we'll go to our block editor. And as you can see, when I go into block editor this time, there's something different on there. There's this thing that says distance, and then there's a little thing down the bottom here that says stretch. I'm just going to delete that. Now, when you open block editor, there should be a authoring palette, such as the one I have here on the on the left. Now, if you left click on parameters, what we want to do is we want to first create a linear. Um, I'll just turn on my ortho. There we go. And we'll create, we'll click from the start of the window to the end of the window to create a distance. And as you can see, it pulls up two arrows. Um, generally, I just have one. So what I can do is I can select the distance, right click. Oops, sorry, I'll try that again. Right click and go to display, grip display up the top in this menu. And we'll change it to one grip. As you can see, it's deleted the grip on the left-hand side and left the one on the right. So that's basically telling us that we want to move the do something. We want to move this this arrow here and, and we want something to happen. We haven't told it what we want it to actually do at this stage. We're just told it when this arrow is grabbed, 
and we move it up and down, something's going to happen. So let's make something happen. So we'll left click on Actions tab on our palettes here on the left. And what we want to do is we want to stretch those objects. So we'll left click on Stretch. And if we look at the bottom here, it's asking us to select the parameter, which is this one. It's going to ask us for the second point. So we select on our uh, where our blue arrow is. Now it's going to ask us to create a like a, a square sort of thing, a polygon over the objects we want to stretch. So left click start and left click to end. And now it's going to ask us the objects we want to stretch. So those are the objects we want to stretch. And now I can right click or press space. And okay, so we're we're pretty much set. So now if I click on close block editor again and save changes, you can see that we've still got that where we had it before. So it's a very useful um, block to have. As I said, you can do that with anything you like, really. You do it with doors or anything. There's a lot more you can do with these. You can um, we'll go back into the block editor, right click, block editor. We can set um, increments and so forth that we want this door to be set at. So, uh, from memory, when you select on the different objects, you can actually set this. So, um, we can set it to exactly 10 mil or 5 mil. So, we've got the distance type here. So, we can set to increment. So, we can set it so moves in increments of say 10 mil and oops sorry 10 mil there we'll give that zero and we'll close again and as you can see it's now snapping in 10 mil increments um, yeah which is quite useful if you wanted to stick to certain window or, or door widths so there's a lot more you can do that we may look at that a little later it's quite a quite a big topic in the dynamic blocks but hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of what we can do with blocks um, we will use blocks in the um, last exercise of this chapter um, for when we put windows and doors into our uh, house uh, from the last uh, exercise as I said you can actually also put in make blocks such as furniture so like beds and, and couches um, you know, tables and chairs uh, they're useful things to make as blocks which we will do and we'll insert them into our um, into our ground floor plan I'm just going to quickly look at um, how you can export a block to a separate drawing for uh, importing to another drawing later if you wanted to uh, we're also going to look at inserting a block into the same drawing in case you deleted it. So for instance, uh, we had this block here. If I type li for list and press space for enter, it tells us that the name of this block was block standard. So we can escape out of that. Okay, now if I delete that, um, it's like, well, how do we get that block inside the drawing? It's already inside the drawing. It's just that we don't have a reference of it anywhere. What we use is the insert command. So we type the letter i press space or enter and as you can see here we have insert we have a few other blocks in there which I used for the testing in this thing so we have block standard and we have insertion point so it asks us it'll ask us for an insertion point if we just left that it uh, clicked off it'll insert the block automatically at zero 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 and it'll insert it um, at the point where the blue grip is on the block so I'll just leave that so we can pick a spot we want to insert it. Um, the scale option here, generally keep it at one. So um, you want your block to be exactly uniform all the way around. If you remember in the block creation, it asked us if we wanted to uniform or scale uniformly. Um, so if we did that, we can do that here as well. So it's just set at one all automatically every, the, the, the length and width will always be exactly the right scale but in this case we could also alter it so x could be one but we can make it uh, twice as uh, wide if we wanted to um, we can just leave that like that rotation 
Um, it'll rotate the block on the screen. You can also rotate that later, but you don't have to do that here. And if we just click OK, and we've selected our block, and we click OK, and it'll ask us for insertion point. So we can just left click there. Now we're going to insert again. So I space the enter. And this time we'll, I'll show you how the scale works. This time we'll make this perhaps three. And click OK. And as you can see, the X is the same scale. But see the, the Y in this direction has gone three times what it normally would. So that's basically how that works. Um, if you also look at the insert command again, we have explode, so you can actually import the block exploded. So if I do that, I'll ask you for an insertion point, and as you can see, it's, it's come in and it's fully exploded. Uh, it might be useful for some things. Generally, I find I never really need to use that. Um, that's the basics of insertion. Now, we go back to the insert command, and we look. These blocks that are shown in this drop down block are actually inside this drawing, but they're only in this inside this drawing only. If I wanted to insert this block into another drawing, uh, I would have to first export it. So to do that, we use a command called write block, so WB. And you can um, create a block directly from objects, like we did when we created the normal block out, but uh, we've already got a block, so we'll tell it that we want this block here and we want to export it, it'll ask us to export it to a particular um, path. So here it's defaulting to this one. Um, I could pick somewhere else, perhaps I'll just put it on my desktop for now, and click Save, and I'll click OK. Make sure your units as well before we do that are set to the correct units. Now if I go to this, you can see here it's created, I'll create, open another version of AutoCAD, and you'll be able to see that it's created another um, version of the block. There we go, by itself. And as you can see, it's all lines still, because that's for inside. It's, it's, it's as if we're inside the block editor, but if I inserted this as a block, it would be solid. So, um, for instance, now if I wanted to. Uh, insert another block. Well, we'll go back to our previous drawing and we'll export perhaps this dynamic block. And I'll just list, type ally for list, find out what the name of that one is. Let's just test DYN, so test dynamic. We'll type WB to write block again. And we'll create block because we've already got a block in there. Again, we'll just leave it as default to desktop. Okay, now if I go back to my other drawing, which is actually the block that we just opened up, if I type I for insert, I can go to browse, and as you can see we're on our desktop already, and I can insert that block. And it's all the same settings as we had previously. We won't explode it, um, and we'll leave that uniform scale. And as you can see, we've now inserted that block. That's, so that's how you can in insert a block that's outside of the drawing it was created in. Um, sort of basic sort of stuff. Um, you may want to watch this tutorial again just so you get the hang of how to go about doing that. It is pretty straightforward. Um, so I just thought I'd let you know about that. Okay.